the theme tonight. But a call came up from the city we love, Providence, Rhode Island. So we put up into the sky the symbol for Monique Chartier. It's a secret symbol. I can't tell you what it is. But she came and running because yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, in a move straight out of the Gina Raimondo administration, we found out that certain people aren't going to be allowed to drive on certain roads. Now, if that sounds innocuous, it's not. We're going to harken back to the enabling legislation that talked about tolls here in Rhode Island. I don't think anyone listening to this show, if you're listening to this show at 839, I don't think I have to tell you. Okay. We take high-level language here. We actually take it fairly seriously. But in terms of legislation, the enabling legislation for tolls in Rhode Island sucks. I think that pretty much sums it up. But now we're faced with a situation that we were ultimately afraid of, one of two principal ones. The Department of Transportation held a surprise meeting that was brought to the public forum by Representative Mike Chippendale, if I have that correct. Yes. Um, and were it not for him, and I teased Mike on this show a few times, and so I take it back for tonight. <laughs> but, but he's a good man doing a lot of hard work, and he, uh, he, wow. So joining me in the studio, he's a goddess of all acronyms of all organizations that matter here in the state. Uh, we're going to start the conversation with her capacity as a communication director and someone intimately involved in running Stop Tolls RI. Monique, welcome back to the coalition. Thank you so much, Pat. It's great to be here. Okay, so we find what happened yesterday. Right. <laughs> So I'm going to start in, as my, in my role as communications manager for the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity because that's where I first heard about it. All of a sudden, we got word uh, that there was going to be a hearing at 9.30 a.m. yesterday at the State Traffic Commission, mm -hmm. a request by the DOT to put serious restrictions for commercial trucks, basically Class 7 and above trucks in Rhode Island, to restrict them from long stretches of secondary roads in Rhode Island. Uh, so this would have, so the, the center was, as far as I know, the first to react to this. They quickly issued a statement uh, in which they denounced heavy-handed totalitarian measures um, to restrict the free flow of goods and commerce in Rhode Island. And I, and I have to agree with the statement that this is a tactic that you would see, expect to see in Soviet socialist countries, not in the United States of America. So, well, let me jump in for a second. Let's, let's take the first step. Now, we were joking about this when uh, I was driving in tonight, uh, when, when you were nice enough to drop what you were doing and come into the show because you are a patriot. Anyone who has the misfortune of having to, for a variety of professional reasons, follow the Gina Ramonda Twitter feed, understand that during the Super Bowl, I think she tweeted out, or I shouldn't say she, the incredibly expensive professional staff that you and I pay for tweeted out eight or nine or ten times about how the Patriots are doing. So, forgive me, I, you know, it's been a hectic week out, out in coalition land, but I seem to have missed the tweet from Gina's office saying that they were going contemplating actively promoting regulations, not law, regulations, which don't have to go through the kind of sniff test that laws do. They were actually part of regulations that would prevent people from engaging in free transport of goods and services here in the United States of America. Did, am I the only one who missed that tweet? No, I, I don't think you missed anything, Pat. I think this was very deliberately, they tried to slide this very much under the radar. Uh, they probably technically kept the letter of the law and posted this this hearing where it had to be. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, I'm picturing the men's room on the third floor of the uh, what's that uh, building up there where you know I think I would call it Mordor where the <laughs> where the general administration sits. So on the third floor men's bathroom in one of those cases underneath the smiley photos that say yes you can and all, all those aff affirmations is buried a fine print for this this notice that's, that's what that's, that's what, I'm what that's the impression that we have on this absolutely absolutely because there are a lot of people in Rhode Island who are very concerned about tolls and anything that may arise as a result of it and so we we try and monitor these things very carefully and there was no there was nothing whatsoever given in terms of advance notice or advertising beyond, again, probably the bare minimum for this. So they, they were trying to fly this by under the radar with zero attention by the public so that they could just 
take the next terrible step in moving towards truck tolls. And by the way, this is not the first time they pulled this stunt. As I like to say, stupid government tricks. It's funny, I was reading the notices for the Washington County Fair, and I thought back just a couple of short years ago when DEM tried to promulgate regulations and hold a hearing that would involve farmers yes. the same week as the biggest farm festival in this part of the country. Unbelievable. So I, as we like to say in the coalition, I'm shocked, shocked. It must have been a coincidence. So, yes. so, so, okay. So, people found out about the hearing. Uh, yes. I guess Representative Chippendale was able well, to. Well, he was the only. Yeah, he was the only one to hear about it enough in advance, and he saw what they were planning to do. He apparently got a call from a constituent of his, a business in his district, who was going to be seriously affected by these new restrictions. Mm -hmm. So he dropped everything and went flying to this hearing, and he said, "Please wait. You need to understand what you're about to vote on." And it was to restrict, seriously restrict trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and so he, he, he. Was able to get them to vote three to two, not to, not to approve this regulation or this new restriction, um, and that, but to also move to take it up at a future date. So, you know, and, major and, kudos to Rep. Chippendale for right. stepping forward and, and exposing this and getting it stopped. I mean, thank you, Rep. Chippendale. Fantastic work. And, and why do I have this me mental image of Gina in the bunker at the uh, State House doing the trap, trap, double trap? <laughs> Foiled again! <laughs> who, who, who is the bad, bad guy from Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Yeah, I, I have this image of. <laughs> we'll show them. I, I just, <laughs> sorry. But, but that's the kind of stupidity you have to expect because that's the only way you can rationalize or reconcile this type of behavior. That's exactly, unfortunately, that's exactly right. Yes, I think there are some people who are, are really gnashing their teeth uh, who are in favor of these tolls. Absolutely right about now. Now, and let's, as so often the case is, okay, you've got the, the symptoms and the actual disease. The symptom in this case is, once again, Miss, well, at beauty pageants, they have Miss Congeniality. So this year's award winner, not of the Miss Transparency Award, oh. will, will go to Gina Raimondo, governor, of, uh, who I'm sure is probably equally annoyed because the, the spin that she had ready to roll, uh, paid and bought for, what's that, you know, newspaper, whatever, um, you know, ready to go, um, is, is probably got to be on hold now. Yes. You know, that's why maybe she had to come out this week with that whole thing about the PR firm getting an award for cooler and warmer. But yeah. So anyway, uh, so, but you're talking about in a state where truck transportation is the primary method of delivering goods to businesses. That's exactly right. You know, there are a hand, Providence Worcester, there's a handful of freight lines. Those are, those are really designed to support major industries. But if you're running a restaurant on one of those streets, if you're running anything, if you're not a major manufacturer, you're just a regular ham and eggger. Now, by the way, I say that with love because I'm a ham and eggger and I have profound respect for ham and eggers. But if you're running a regular business with about five or ten people and somehow, despite the very best efforts of the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, you've managed to not thrive, God forbid, but actually keep the business open, mm -hmm. all right, how do you get your stuff? Uh, on trucks. And Pixie dust? Yeah, and apparently, apparently. Um, Call Spock? Yeah. Do the walk in my it over. Beam it over. Because there's clearly no intelligent life down here. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so somehow, thanks to Representative Chippendale, we managed to avoid that for now. Yes. Does the center, do you get any sense that, you know, they feel admonished at the state level for not publicizing this more aggressively? I, I don't think so. I think that they are probably secretly disappointed that this came out. But I, I mean, I'd like to, if I could, discuss mm -hmm. the, the, so what is proposed is that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trucks will be asked to and then somehow compelled to go only on routes where they will hit toll gantries. That's the entire point of these. These are road right. restrictions for commercial trucks so that they will not take the secondary roads and back roads, but to herd them into the toll Fun, alleys. Funnel them right into the tolls. Uh, yeah, funnel them into the tolls, exactly. Mm -hmm. There's enormous problems with this on a practical level. So as Rep. Chippendale's constituent said, Mike, if I, I, so Pat, all the businesses that have trucks, they're all, they're all parked on 95, right? 
All of them are all located, no they're not, they're located all over Rhode Island, some of them are in the hinterlands of Rhode Island, they don't they're not conveniently located on these toll corridors, so some of them actually have to run these roads in order to get to their customers right. every day. So this, for example, this constituent of Mike Chippendales said, I'm going to have to drive 50 miles out of the way every day to comply with this, this route restriction. For the love of God. Which, in, in, which ironically will force all traffic onto a subset of roads, which won't that accelerate the demise of said road, physical condition of said roads, therefore defeating the entire purpose for which the tolls were put in, allegedly, in the first place, which was to pay for the reconstruction of these roads. Yes, that's, that's exactly right. So that is, that is one major problem with doing this. So you've got now hundreds of trucks a day are going to be compelled to go out of the way to go into the toll corridor. Then you've got the flip side of this. You've got trucks so that want to, that, that need to go down the toll road. Let's say, but they, they need to get off, they get off the toll road for some reason. The police officer pulls them over and he, they say, he says to the driver, why are you going down this road? So already we have a problem. We're going to have to patrol hundreds, if not thousands, of trucks every day mm -hmm. to ask them where they're going. Why are they not on the toll road? So okay, the the, the and, and, and by the way, the analogy that I used earlier this evening: Please, sir, may I see your papers? Right, right, exactly, exactly. So he's pulling the truck over who hasn't broken the law. He now has to ask the trucker, the driver, why are you going down this road? So there's like a bunch of answers that he can give. So the number, the only one that the, the driver can prove is if he's actually got to make a delivery. He shows him a bill of lading. Yes, I'm going down this road because I have to make a delivery. Okay, but then suppose that's not the case. Then the, the, uh, the driver says, sir, I, I have to see him. I'm going down this road because I have to see a man about a dog. I'm going down this road because I want to get a coffee. I'm going down this road to pull off the road. I'm, I'm going down the damn road because I feel like it. I'm going down the road because I feel like it. Um, but I'm not dodging the tolls. How is a police officer or a state trooper supposed to determine what really the reason for the driver being on that road is. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is, this, is the, this is the impossible situation that Rydot and Governor Raimondo proposes to put hundreds and thousands of trucks daily in Rhode Island. And worst of all, or not worst of all, one of the, yet another bad aspect of this is state troopers and local police have other things to do than to harass legitimate drivers legitimate people pursuing commerce in the state. They have other things to do. But for some reason, the, the proposal is to turn them into revenuers, as they used to call, right. uh, in the, you know, when there was prohibition, and they would pull people over only instead of looking for illicit whiskey, we're looking for the naughty driver, truck driver, who's going down the wrong road for the wrong reason. Right, and these are roads that are built specifically for commerce. I mean, there is well-documented reason why certain roads, as an aside, most of the roads surrounding Burrowville, aren't built for or suited for heavy-duty truck traffic. Right. There are limitations posted on those roads because of that. Sure. There's a level of common sense to that. These are commercially viable roads where people are located engaging in commerce that simply committed the cardinal error of not being built directly in the pathway of a gantry. That's exactly right. That's a, these are legitimate secondary highways that are designed and made, as you say, to handle the he these heavy trucks. So there is no physical reason to divert them from these secondary roads. Other than to funnel money into. So in a state where we're desperately trying to find ways to keep these people in business, yes. we are creating yet another, for lack of a better term, roadblock, all right? toward their success. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. You know, the Rhode Island Trucking Association put it very well. They said that the Governor Raimondo and Rydot want to treat us trucks as rolling ATMs. And that is exactly right. But the, the problem is that it isn't just that the state wants to dip into the wallet of the truckers and the trucking companies. They're using the trucks to dip into all of our pockets. Because it won't be just the truckers, right. as Gina so 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 claims that it will be paying the tolls, they will pay, pass part of that cost on to us. So as a matter of fact, they are using the trucks as rolling ATMs to levy a hidden tax on all of us. And that is an enormous problem and it's enormous, yet another enormous dishonesty about the governor's truck toll proposal. I, I gotta tell you, you know, you and I have been 
fighting these battles now. It's been a few years. Um, we've heard some truly moronic situations. Parked on the job, no story, 38 studios. But just on a sheer level of basic stupidity. Gina, you win! <laughs> I, you know, later on, another year or so, we'll have sound effects. The, the roof will open up, confetti will come down, <laughs> balloons, balloon animals. Gina, I'll do balloon animals for you, okay? For you. All right? I do a really good donkey. Um, wow. No, but you're raising a terrific point because from the beginning, the, this has been the, the troll, the, the truck toll proposal has been fraught with gross misinformation. And, and dishonesty. Um, because they were, and they were, in terms of the misinformation, they've gotten the truck counts wrong. Uh, they, they have already lowered their truck counts quietly twice, now right. to the point where they won't even tell us what they think the truck counts are. And they have completely underestimated the diversion rate by which you, that's a critical factor when you're d trying to calculate what you're going to collect right. for tolls. You have to calculate whether the, the, the truck that's going to go through Rhode Island will actually take 395 instead. And that has been completely underestimated. And the, the, the latest, so there has been um, both, both misinformation deliberately and dishonesty. And the latest dishonesty has been the assertion by DOT today that this, or yesterday, that this road restriction was not really, not really pertaining to tolls. It was, it was a question of safety. Which is a, ah the infamous safety argument exactly exactly so I mean but I've okay, heard that before as you said it's a massive coincidence that all the roads that they want to steer these trucks onto are truck toll toll roads no that's all a coincidence it's safety it's a coincidence it's about safety it's not about the tolls it's just more dishonesty and it's laughable nothing to look at here move along exactly exactly um so one more thing in the game of road. If Rhode Island were a video game, it would be whack-a-mole. Yes. Because yet now we have one other thing, fast one, we have to watch out for the people that we elected. Right, exactly. Who, instead of acting honestly and openly and for our best interest, are sort of scurrying around behind the scenes and underground doing what they feel that they want to do. That I, I don't think that they're doing it for the best interest of Rhode Island and Rhode Islanders. They're doing it for other reasons. Folks, if you're just joining me, we're Nick Shard today. <laughs> from the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity and No Tolls Rhode Island is joining me here live in the studio. This segment, by the way, is sponsored by airsciences.net. Folks from airsciences.net cover the entire state, specializing in mold remediation, duct cleaning, and if, heaven forbid, so much in your family should be sensitive to biological issues, be in medical treatment, they do offer specials on home remediation, home disinfecting, for practice like that, airsciences.net for the life you lead. So what's next? We we, we wait until the next time, or we, yeah. We... So we, yeah, they're they're it was, so this is now on everybody's radar. So now we're just going to keep an eye on the the uh, meeting announcements of the state traffic commission to see when it comes up again. There has also been who knew by the way who knew there was a state traffic commission. <laughs> what is it? Who's on the state traffic commission, Monique? I mean, and do they get paid? Do they get great question? I mean, great is question. it? Do they get a pension? I want to be on a traffic commission. I want to finish. I want to be on a commission. <laughs> Any chance you think this administration I'm getting on a commission? Uh, I I'm thinking possibly not, Pat. I'm sorry to break it to you. Damn, I want to be on a commission. Do, do, you, do you get like a, a decoder ring? Oh, that would be great. I I don't I don't do, wait, know. Do you get pens? I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna reference a movie. Do I get a special stapler? <laughs> <laughs> if I get a special stapler, I'm on board. Okay, where's my stapler? That's not what I'm going to check into that. Yeah, okay, um, somebody please out there, if if you hear if you're within this show's broadcast, tell me that there's the traffic commission folks don't get paid. All right, That's tell and tell question. yeah, and tell me they're not related to other people in the DOT. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep an eye on their meeting announcements. There has also been concern that they will try and get this by another way. The only other way that I can think of would be through the General Assembly, uh, but this is all on the radar now, so we need to keep an eye on it. The other news that came out is poss partially, possibly as a result of this, is that we have heard that uh, gantries construction is going to start in the fall, and the first two gantries will be- Finally some cranes in the sky! <laughs> 
Do you think they'll rent a crane in the sky for that one, even though like like five guys could probably lift these up? That's a very good question. I don't think that cranes funded by the taxpayers and the truckers really counts as cranes in the sky. Cranes in the sky. Yeah. Darn, darn, darn. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, so the first gantries are going to be, two gantries are going to be live in the, at the end of December, apparently, so we have that to look forward do we, to. Do we know where those are going to be? No, the rumor has been uh, 95 down by exit 4 and exit 5, but that's obviously until it actually goes up, we're not going to. I, I was going to say, odds of it being in a Republican's district. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. And for the record, every Republican and some Democrats voted against the, the tolls. Right, so. right, right, right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, who, who's the winner of that big lottery? That's a very good point. Um, That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't in Cranston or Providence. Yeah, I guess they, they certain speakers, uh, what's that bridge that was falling apart that they didn't, I, that's, yeah, okay. Um, the Park uh, Avenue Bridge down the road from his office? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's where the first gantry should go. <laughs> <laughs> This, you know, mm, it's, yeah. I, I, that's an interesting point, actually. Every legislator who voted for tolls, I think that's something to be considered. Should get a gantry and you're there. Yeah, and actually, I think it was on the Matty Allen show that he suggested that maybe it was him suggested that we name the gantries after. Oh, I think that's a great idea. Certain legislators. Absolutely. Maybe we can get the guy who did the big blue bug to, to do the, to do the gantries. What do you think? I, I don't know about that, but I think it's a fantastic idea. Every yeah. gantry should have the name of a legislator on it who voted. Yeah. This toll gantry brought to you courtesy you Rep. Smith, Senator there's, there's Jones. A, there's a mailing in there, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the crazy part is, even with their attempt to double down on stupidity and, and sheer stupidity, I mean, if they're, if, if you could, can you sue someone for legislative malpractice? I don't, I don't know. I wish you could. I wish you could. Wow. Um, <clears throat> Most of the truck traffic is just probably going to go up 395 anyway. But the uh, the trucks that have to go through Rhode Island, they're going to be, everybody seems to agree, anybody who's spoken with a trucker, they're just going to take 395. It's 11 miles out of the way, but they'll avoid the, the toll in Rhode Island. Right. So. Which will cost us dearly in terms of gasoline tax, dearly in terms of transportation costs. The um, registration fees that Rhode Island gets when a truck goes through the state, right. those will be lost. That's yeah. exactly right. So again... Is there any indication that anyone's done a study at any level, in any shape, way, or form, at any place, at any time, uh, as to the revenue neutrality of this? There have been numerous studies about this. Um, the, the one that I find most convincing is, and I don't think there's any question about this, the, the issue is that in part of, it's called Roadworks, is the program. Of course, I don't use the word toll in it. Uh, part of it is borrowing. Um, and the, the best numbers that we can come up with, half of the money that will be collected on tolls will go to repay interest and gantry costs, half of the tolls. Right. So half of the money that's collected on tolls is going to be flushed down the drain, paid to Wall Street and paid to gantry maintenance and collection of tolls. It's uh, completely absurd. It makes no sense whatsoever as a means of revenue, even if it were a legitimate means of revenue. Right. So on a fundamental economic level, what you're literally doing is you're taking money that's in the state economy. And this is, you know, you, You've heard me babble on about the paw stocks often enough, so I guess this is my mantra for the year. But you're literally in a if 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 I could compare the economy to Rhode Island to, for example, say Venezuela, mm -hmm. where you are this Venezuela is so desperate for hard dollars because of the sheer amount of capital flight that took place in the wake of all the, these this economic madness. Mm -hmm. Or any one of a number of countries which attempts to control their economy. Um, on a fundamental economic level, between the money to Wall Street, the money to out-of-state vendors to manufacture and support, um, you're literally taking money and just shooting it right out of the economy. That's a great point. I hadn't even thought of that. The money that's going isn't even going into back into Rhode Island. That's going to Wall Street. That's right. going to out-of-state gantry. Fundamental capital flight. That's and, and, and the, to the tune of potentially billions of dollars. Yes, that's exactly right. That is exactly right. It is just and just for the record. That we, that we, the money to repair the bridges can be found in the budget. There were two different studies that showed that we can find the money uh, in the budget to repair the roads and bridges. Tolls are completely unnecessary to do this. Thank you so much again for coming Thank in. Thank you. All right. Pleasure. Um, on such short notice, I'm serious about the bat logo. I don't think we'll do bat. you got to tell me what you're... Thank you, Pat. So we'll do the logo up in the sky. And when, when people and taxpayers in Rhode Island see the logo, they'll feel a little better because they know you're on the way. Um.
<laughs> Just quickly, if I could give Absolutely. the websites, the rifreedom.org, I see our statement and lots of great information there, and then the uh, I'm a volunteer spokesperson for StopTollsRI.com. Right. And uh, both of which sites are referenced on the coalition radio .us. Right, right. right on the home page, you can, the, uh, you'll see a little billboard flashing through. You'll see the stop tolls are right come across because that's an issue, unfortunately, that's never going away. You, do you think we'll ever have one of these nights on a Friday night where we're like hosting champagne glasses at the end of the night instead of like essentially talking about And saying how wonderful it is and everything is going well and oh, that'd be fantastic. Honestly, I would love that. Yeah, you know, we, we, we'll do shooters or jello shots or something. <laughs> is, is that, I mean, Oh, I would yeah. love it. I would love it, truly. Well, again, folks, um, if you stuck with us through the entire show or you catch parts of this in the future, thank you so very much for taking time from your, from your evening to listen or your day. Uh, you have a lot of choices as to where you can go get news and get information and discussion and conversation in a wor world of increasingly balkanized media with real media and fake media mixed in. I'll let you make the judgment as to where we fall. But thank you for taking the time to listen. Folks, we are the Coalition, broadcasting live here on the Worldwide Coalition Network, 90 Way Boston Street, in the heart of the city we love, Providence, Rhode Island, the naked city, the city of 1,000 stories. Tonight, we talked with four different groups of people, nationally, locally. As always, they share one common denominator. They all hashtag take it very, very, very personally. We'll have some special guests lined up for next week because we're about to embark on the silly season. Yes, it's the re-election season is starting all over again. Cue to the sound effects of people screaming in the shower, but it's back on us. So we'll be libertarian fabulous, we'll be naval, we'll be up the backsides of the people who purport to run this state, the people who were elected and the people who have in, essentially taken themselves and forced themselves upon us.